G'day, and welcome back to our virtual tour of the long-abandoned Rothbury branch line in rural Northumberland in the United Kingdom. We've still got around 10 miles to go, so let's get cracking and continue our journey down the line to Rothbury. And after an interesting stopover in Longwitten, your train starts a slow 1 in 100 descent into the valley of the River Font. the exception of a few more stone bridges and a lineside hut. There's nothing much to look at for the next two miles except that still pleasant rural Northumbrian countryside. Okay, okay, and the sheep, alright, and the sheep, lots of sheep. And a few minutes later, you arrive at Usley Station. And Usley was built on top of an old 400 foot diameter circular Roman camp. One of many to be found in the area. So there could be some interesting historical modelling possibilities with that. This section of track, some five miles from Scotts Cap Junction, contained the only passing loop in the branch, which was added in 1894. Since the line only ever had light traffic, the passing siding was barely used. However, for modelling purposes, I'd certainly keep that functionality. And a shorter siding serves some goods traffic here. So, we'll unload a couple of parcels off here for the locals, and after a quick stop, keep heading down the line. less than a mile past usually, you come to a magnificent stone viaduct crossing the River Font. Now this crossing was one of only two significant engineering problems encountered when building the line. Fontburn Viaduct is an impressive 12 arch structure, approximately 60 foot high and 150 yards long. It is definitely something that should be included with any model of this branch line. Continuing north, just a few hundred yards, and you'll arrive at a rather quaint, rickety timber platform known as Fontburn Halt. And your journey is more than half completed, with just over seven miles done so far. This area had several sidings, initially serving the White House Lime Works and Quarry, and after the railway arrived, White House Colliery. Much later, there was also a mineral railway to Usley Quarries. And of course, the station at Fontburn Holt. Fontburn Holt was originally established during the construction of Fontburn Reservoir around 1900 to handle the construction materials used. A goods bay was located behind the platform and a railway crossing style gate protected that from the main line. Certainly, from a modelling perspective, this halt with its tiny wooden waiting shelter and interesting platform is well worth scratch building just for the heck of it, I think. Now some confusion arises regarding the actual location of this platform. While Wikipedia shows the Daisy Cottages as the station building, I believe the actual location for Fontburn Halt was a hundred or so yards to the south based on the 1923 ordnance maps I've only just discovered. It's a totally different layout compared to the 1890 maps I was using when I first started investigating this branch line and on those 1923 maps not only is the real location of Fontburn Halt shown but there also appears to be a short siding opposite the halt and a mineral railway line extending up to Usley Quarries. 
It just shows I made a big blunder when I settled on looking only at the early 1890s series of maps. So let's check out what else is here and have a quick overview of the area, starting with Fontburn Reservoir. This was built to store water in the early 1900s and has a water treatment works at the foot of the wall. Apparently the reservoir is also pretty good for fishing. Swinging around, we can see the Font River winding its way off to the coast to the southeast. And as we zoom over a farm, we see something rather unexpected. And, and if you modelled it, people would think you were crazy. And yet, here we are. Welcome to Fingerprint Field. I think the farmer was either having fun, or a little drunk, or both, doing this. Heading back to the north, and shown in pink below, this mineral railway to Usley Quarries I discovered from the later 1923 map series. And while the White House Quarry and Lime Works below were shown as disused on that map, I believe they were established before the railway came to the area in the 1870s. And stone from White House Quarry was used in the construction of the viaduct at Fontburn. As you leave Fontburn and head north, the Rothbury branch line runs alongside a tramway that served White House Colliery and also runs under yet another stone bridge, which signifies you're at the second highest point of your journey. White House Colliery was apparently opened after the railway came, but it too was also shown as disused on the 1923 maps. Over the next four and a half miles, the line begins a descent into the River Cocay Valley. This is the longest section of your trip between stations, and you've got plenty of time to take in the views of the Northumbrian countryside. If there was a buffet carriage on the train, you'd probably enjoy a nice cup of tea and a crumpet right about now. On this part of the journey, the main distractions for you, apart from even more sheep everywhere, <laughs> are the imposing Simon Side Hills over to the west, which do exactly what hills seem to do, and that's to stand guard high above the area. There are several sidings which served local collieries in the early 1900s. Apparently there was a siding which went to a colliery near Blagdenburn to the west, although I couldn't find any real evidence of it. But I did discover on the 1923 maps that there were sidings servicing a mineral railway to Forestburn Colliery, which also included a short section of double track, with another siding at the southern end serving a quarry. From the same 1923 map series, I also found a place called The Siding, which surprisingly had two short sidings in the 1920s. These served an interesting double track tramway crossing the valley to Lee Colliery. But let's get back on track, because it's not far to go now to the second last station of your virtual cab ride. Keep your eye on that purple line at the top of the screen. And shortly, with still over two and a half miles to complete your journey, you arrive at Brinkburn Station. Total distance so far, about ten and a half miles. The station master's residence is the only station building remaining here. 
There's also a concrete pillbox, which was apparently built to defend the station property during World War II if the need ever arose. But most impressively, there was an aerial ropeway, which transported coal across the valley from Helicote Colliery 1.8 miles away. We'll have a closer look at that in the next episode, and also finish the trip down the line to Rothbury. If you haven't done it yet, make sure you like, subscribe, share, ring that bell, do all of that sort of stuff. I'm Stephen Spry, and cheers for now.